we brought some coverage live to you along with uh, Brian Houseworth and Mike Murphy. John, your thoughts as you were unpacking that yesterday. Wow. Yeah. What else do you say, right? And, um, you know, what do you say? We talked to David Tyson Smith, who was there with his daughter, and he said there was mayhem. Uh, People were running out of Union Station. Police officers were running in. No one knew what was going on. Um, And and I'm so thankful for Mr. Contreras. I mean, it's just amazing. What would have happened had he not been there? Well, and for the 800 police officers on the ground and for other folks. um, Who got right on it. Yeah, yeah, and they said there you could see in the in the, one of the shots of you know people were running, but then there were some people running toward the action to try to help. And so I hope that's what people see when they see you know that that the focus is on all of the helpers that we had yesterday to keep people safe, um, because certainly it could have been much worse. Um, but yeah, it, it's devastating, and of course we're learning more about um, the one individual who had died, Ms. Lopez, and um, I know we were chatting Hannah last night about it um, because she was a radio DJ. And so we kind of have a little club that we like to call the Ladios. And I said she was one of us. She was a local, um, did some work on local radio, did some DJing in the community, was very involved in the Hispanic community, and what um, is being remembered this morning. So that's tough. Yeah, Lisa Lopez Galvin in her forties, uh, who Mo- was mother of two, died in surgery um, after the shooting. So uh, just a, what a horrific event and. Um, again, these numbers are the latest that we have by the various report. Uh, I've heard 22, a pretty consistent number of people that were injured, um, 11 of whom were children, eight or nine were shot. So there were probably children injured in maybe stampede type of injuries. Yeah, that's um, what we understood from the hospital spokesman. Yeah. I guess if there's any good news out of this, hospital spokesman from uh, Children's Mercy in Kansas City, said all the kids are expected to recover and none at as of early last evening were in critical condition yeah well and i know we've already given one shout out to law enforcement but the kansas city police department is really being hailed because obviously when you have so many people in downtown kansas city for this celebration you know they went through the work beforehand prior to this prior to the parade to make sure that they had plans in place in case something did happen. And all things considering, they were able to get control of the scene fairly quickly. Um, And, I mean, I, for one, am very grateful that they were well prepared um, because I can't imagine how much worse it could have been. And Hannah's spot on about that. Uh, I think it's very important to note the governor yesterday was at the scene. He and the first lady... Andy Reid, we now know, according to David Tyson Smith, was not far as well. Um, this gunfire happened very close to where actually the the, the rally ended. And Andy Reid, I think the chiefs were taken maybe out of the back or whatever, but they were not far away and they were transported to safety. The governor was there. The police had a plan. The governor said they ran towards safety. Representative Tyson Smith ran towards safety. We know that. And I want to point something out. I think it's very important. I th- and by the way, if, if folks, if you didn't hear our interview with David Tyson Smith, please go to our websites and listen to it. KWS.com, 939theeagle.com. You want to talk about powerful. But I want to make one point, Randy. Before this shooting about a week ago, and I hope whoever put this up takes their tweet down, that Mayor Quentin Lucas proposed a pay raise for his starting officers in Kansas City. And of course, Mayor Lucas is he's a progressive, but he he realizes that these officers, they have a difficult job that's putting it mildly, and he wanted to raise their pay, not just for the starting officers, but also for people who are on the job. I look at sometimes, I look at the replies to it, and there were replies critical. Mm-hmm. How could you do this, ra- raise pays for these people? And, and one particular person said, all they do is, I'm paraphrasing here, but literally the person said, all they do is write tickets and they don't do anything. Yeah, well, it's what the person said in these officers ran inside toward the danger is Representative Tyson Smith told us yesterday. And according to the, the mayor, I mean, this is this is very, very powerful. They save lives. There is no question. There are vile people in this country who are uninformed, ignorant, spend too much time doing things other than tending to learning the truth about what's important in governance, what is responsible, what governance is responsible for their defund uh, police movements in this very area in columbia missouri and uh anyone who does that shame on you you're an embarrassment because had they been had we not had adequate police um a presence there 
Uh, I mean, those policemen were on top of this guy once Mr. Contreras and others joined him. That, and, I mean, they took care of it. Had they not been there, you don't know what could have happened. Well, and, and shame on people like Jess Piper, who immediately tweeted no. out uh, that the blood was on the governor's hands. Mm. What? Immediately. The blood was on the governor's hands. Yeah. Um, and Ms. This- Piper, uh, we need to call her. We need to call the office and ask her to explain that. What? What? Does anyone have any idea? Does she need some mental health help? I mean, I'm serious. Does she need some mental health help? Why would anyone post that there's blood on the governor's hands because of a shooting at a Kansas City Chiefs rally? Well, Can anyone explain that to me? I'm going to reach out to her office this morning. This well, is this has she, me worked up. I'm not sure she has an office. Uh, is are I mean, you, is no. that real? That wasn't yeah. a troll post? I mean, that wasn't no, an well, AI Well, it post? is a troll post just because she posted is it. Is she but, sick yeah. in the head? Yeah, we need I mean, mental they, health in this co- co- uh, 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 help in this state. Apparently, Jess Piper needs it. I don't know her from beans, but she needs it. Well, they she's... immediately started making it a political issue, and I think folks said that's you know, a that's shameful and disgusting. And then B also tell us what laws would stop bad guys with guns from doing bad things. Like what an embarrassment! I think when we get the full details, I I I, I don't know. I mean, that's you know, we all want to you know not have these situations. But what can the what laws can we pass to get different? Uh, is know, she to, is she proposing that people that we bring uh, the armed uh, police officers into people's home and take the three hundred and some odd million guns that are in America? Is that what she's proposing? She doesn't have any proposals. Yeah, and, and remember, she's not in the General Assembly, but she has a she has a, a large Twitter following, primar- primarily from the urban areas and stuff. But she actually lives in Northwest Missouri. Sick woman. But um, <laughs> sorry, but, you know, the, Sick. I I want to point out something in fairness. There are other Democrats who have taken the mayor of Kansas City. If you listen to him and you listen to David Tyson Smith, they did not take the approach. No, that, of course not. The, and I, and I, I just, asked him last night. Yeah. I said, "Look, it, you, no, you wear two hats. You're a legislator. Uh, He's you, also a father. you're a father whose daughter was there, and you must be in a traumatized situation. How are you processing that now?" And mm-hmm. he said, "I'm really not." And I said, "That's fair. We'll talk about it later." And then we have state senators also on Twitter who are tweeting about the shooting and going, I wasn't there because we were supposed to be, you know, in Jefferson City working today, so I stayed in town. Yeah. Well, good for you, buddy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. what what point are you trying That's to prove? That's irrelevant. And it's it, so distasteful. At that point, yeah. In, in, in their, Rick Bratton had said that, but in, I want to clarify one thing about that. He had said that, and he was talking specifically about the Senate leadership not about the shooting. I understand what you're saying, Hannah, but I think what he was trying to say is Rowden and uh, and he had said that also. He said something similar before they went to the parade. He felt like the the Senate should be in session, but but he was critical of not the the parade itself and the Chiefs. I think he was criticizing Caleb Rowden for 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 doing that. But th- that that was the there, timing but, is poor. You can argue about whether the Senate should have been in session or not. Frankly, before the fact, it I doesn't was, matter. I was talking about it yesterday morning in the break room. I'd like I I'd like to see the Senate in session. Frankly, there was, you know, that's there my was, opinion. But you certainly would not want to make a big deal of that after the fact. And, and I, there were some other ill timed tweets like "Had a great time at the parade today." Yeah without any mention of the mm. horror you know and it, so it just it, it's a tough situation it is and it's just uh, again i would i would say that the the biggest thing that we 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 was live coverage randy and i were doing yesterday on both stations kws and in the eagle and he and i are on fumes right now just so you know yeah. it, it was a long long day and long night but the biggest thing is things changed and um in in things randy the numbers changed uh, in yeah. our live coverage within 90 minutes. They changed right. three times, but the, 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 there was one reporter and I thought the reporters were asking very good question. Their, their questions were appropriate. It was hard to hear with all the sirens, but at one point a reporter asked the chief of Kansas city, Stacy Graves about a shooting that happened earlier in the day. And I hadn't heard anything about that. And they've kept that. They, they, they said that it's still under investigation. I expect probably we'll have another briefing yeah. sometime today. Mm-hmm. I think probably sometime this morning, not early morning. It wouldn't be probably right. after nine, but that's my well, gut feeling. And I don't know that Senator Bill Eigel was scheduled to be a guest at seven and 10. And so we will uh, talk with him about his thoughts about this. I don't know if Senator Eigel was at the event or not. Uh, I just heard from uh, Senator O'Laughlin. Cindy O'Laughlin will be with us at eight ten. She yeah. was at the event. Um, she did post that. I think she was aware of, of something going on, but uh, you know, we'll see now as she said, had a chance to, to process this. And um, and we may uh, maybe uh, 
Uh, Representative Tyson Smith will join us again, too. He'd indicated that he might, but I would respect if he didn't want to. He spent time with us on his way back, he having did. been involved in this with his daughter in the car. Uh, speaking of daughters, Alyssa Marsh Contreras told KTLA 5 Samantha Cortez yesterday, I turned back around, noticed my dad, along with another good Samaritan running, jumping, tackling the second offender. As they tackled him, the weapon fell out. A mm. cop was able to secure that. After that, I just remember yelling, cops, we need cops over here. Somebody come over here. We'll what be covering a, this all morning. I know, John, Brian, you guys will be on it. Hannah's monitoring things. Stephanie Bell is uh, on top of the social media as well. If you were there, if you have a... Uh, a rep-
national security concern. Heard that kind of early in the day and it started to leak out later what exactly this concern was. Um, it involves Russia and apparently space nukes. Yeah. Do you, I don't under, fully understand what, what we're doing with space There's nukes. been speculation that Russia was developing technology as China is developing, I think, laser technology about taking out our space capabilities. I guess shooting our uh, satellites, right? Satellites out. Yeah, I don't know. And so. Um, but there's, that's against some kind of a space treaty that goes back decades. Yes, it is. Um, I think the treaty says that, yeah, no nukes in space. And now they have some serious uh, concerns that Russia is actually developing these and had um, plans, I think, to um, escalate that situation. But the timing is awfully weird because right now in the legislature, they are trying to or in, not in the legislature, in Congress, they are trying to um, advance a bill that would give funding to Ukraine. So certainly if you make Russia the boogeyman, um, <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you would be more inclined to vote for additional funding for Ukraine to put Russia to bed. So at what, the, what at do the, you think? Am I a conspiracy theorist? At or? the risk of, uh, of of doing a Tuckerism, spokesperson for Putin, Dmitry Peskov, said, it's obvious the White House is trying by hook or crook to encourage Congress to vote on a bill to allocate money to Ukraine. I, the timing, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I've heard other national security analysts who were in a former administrations uh, say, "This we've known about this for a couple of years. This is not new news. Now, maybe there's some new implementation, but that's not what they're reporting. So, Yeah, that's tough. And so, Mike Turner is a big advocate for Ukraine, and he's the chair of that And committee. even whatever the new news was, they had <laughs> sat on it for like a week, and yeah. other people had inquired, and they said, we're not going to tell you, we're not going to tell you. And then all of a sudden yesterday, they're like, all right, we're going to... We're going to open up a bit. Well, also, um, we're watching today. Donald Trump is in court. Is he, I think he's just in court every day. We could just <laughs> play that on repeat. He lives there now. He certainly does. <laughs> and some days he has so many court appearances that he has to decide which court he is going to be in. I think today he's actually out in New York. Um, and this is on a scheduling um, on this New York trial about what they're calling the hush money trial date and whether that you know that case will proceed quickly or not um but i don't think anyone is going to be paying attention to this today randy because i think all eyes are going to be on the Fonnie willis hearing today yes that is some serious business they are going to actually conduct an evidentiary hearing i think as someone said you're going to be able to kind of tune in and i i, I haven't fact checked that so don't i'm I, but i'm hoping that you can because this one i would take some time today to pay attention to um you know what exactly is this relationship what motivated her prosecution what's the extent of the relationship did she personally benefit um and the judge said you know she could actually be disqualified there seems to be some questioning about whether her beau who really his resume revolves around traffic tickets and personal injury whether the relate he testified apparently under oath or was deposed that he the relationship started after he was hired but there's other reports that apparently are in opposition to that. Yeah, it. the um, the defendant in the case, Michael Roman, his attorneys say that they have cooperating witnesses that would show that the relationship started before. Does that change the equation? I think so. Wow. I think so. I think if you have a romantic relationship, then and then you hire somebody who has no experience in that area, it, it starts to look. Yeah, oh, smells bad. Oh, more yeah. than that. Yeah, yeah, looks bad. Yeah, for and sure. probably is somehow it is bad illegal. Yeah, it is bad. Yeah. But what would they do? Just assign it to another prosecutor?
you know, other matters, education choice and others. But, of course, what will supersede that will be our ongoing uh, collection of uh, responses from the KC rally, post-rally shootings yesterday. Uh, we still are hearing about, uh, so far, it appears as though uh, the 22 people that were injured, uh, we're not sure if all of them were shot, but 22 injured in addition to the uh, the Kansas City DJ that was uh, that was killed whether they are still in critical condition, a number of them are not, but we're not hearing anything new on that. Um, wanted to, to play for you this Michael Schellenberger uh, bit. So now remember about the whole issue about the Russia hoax and the fake phony dossier that uh, was produced that the CIA, the FBI bought hook, line, and sinker, um, paid for by Hillary Clinton, resulted in, you know, a lot of, a lot of, devastation for people uh, in and around Donald Trump, uh, his orbit. Well, now there's some reporting by Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger. Remember, Taibbi was part of the Twitter files, got mm-hmm. uh, reported on a lot of that. And he's no no conservative at heart. I mean, he was a liberal originally. Um, and this is Schellenberger uh, the other night on um, Jesse Waters' show. Was that, oh, we were just informed by foreign intelligence about this our sources tell us a very different story, which is that this was initiated by the U.S. government. It came from within the U.S. government's intelligence community, including the CIA. And what this what this means is this, you know, I think we all thought that it was bad enough that there was incoming false information that resulted in the investigation of Trump and the various people around him. But now it appears as though the CIA, according to this report, and there's missing uh, three ring binders on this, one yes. or more, yes, was was in contact with other intel agencies, the so-called Five Eyes, and they said, "Hey, bump these people to make it appear as though then they were somehow involved," and that led to the whole got the whole ball rolling. Yeah, if they, these reports are real. Yeah, they, you know, according to this report, they, the Obama administration actually instigated this. And, and the problem with that is that, you know, it appears or at least smells like it was politically motivated, right? Use it weaponizing the government to uh, spy and investigate on your political opponents. And by it, it, it reminds me of the collusion with big tech, right? Uh, that, of course, Eric Schmidt has, a, uh, has joined other attorneys general in suing the government. Like, hey, you can't shut down free speech. Uh, well, we're not doing it. Well, knock, knock on someone else's door and have them do it. This is almost like surrogate, um, you know, intel- counterintelligence on domestic citizens, which the CIA has. That's not in their charter. It's not their business. Yeah. And I think for, for a long time, we've kind of known with the whole Russia hoax stuff is that at some point it they came to know that it was false and that the initial uh you know whatever start kicked it off was false information and and then later it was even they were like yeah this is probably false and, and so at multiple points you know it, it the the crux of what initiated everything they're like yeah this is we we have some doubts but yet the investigation continued and they continued to perpetuate this story and and that is where you know somebody should have put a stop to it at the moment in which they realized hey this is all you know could be has been debunked or could be false and and what resonates in my mind as i think about this is remember those famous words and i'm paraphrasing in the in the text between Peter Strzok, the FBI lead investigator, and Lisa Page, his his mistress, about we're the insurance policy. I mean, you think that there isn't a deep state in this country? You think that there's not a there's a large group of people that think that they own what's right, proper, and uh, just the, the 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 correct thing for the American people? Yeah, and if you haven't, um, one of my favorite events at CPAC, actually, they had two people, and I forget who it was, but they dramatically read the text oh, thread. Oh, really? And <laughs> like a I reenactment? A reenactment. <laughs> and it is, I believe you can still find it online, and it was pretty fantastic. If you haven't read it, it is, uh, it's brutal. You know, we should do that on the show sometime. <laughs> Maybe not with this text thread specifically, but anytime there's like juicy screenshots, we should do that. One of my favorites is, <laughs> what show is it where they, they have the celebrities read the mean tweets or the mean texts Jimmy about Fallon, themselves? Jimmy Fallon, I think. Yes, yeah. and... Uh, 
I think we could probably do that some days. Oh, we've gotten some doozies. <laughs> and let's be honest about it. I mean, yes, John, I don't think it's an understatement to say that politics, very nature of politics is sharp elbows, right? And there's a lot of skullduggery that goes around. I mean, look at the negative ads and the oppo research that we see that, you know, they'll take something out of context. Go back historically with the intelligence agencies being accused of spying on the American people. I mean, J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI and the accusations that they were building a case against Martin Luther King. Yeah. There's nothing new under the sun. Well, before that, you had Dulles, who was the, the CIA guy that exactly. got got intoxicated with his power, right? That, the part of the whole uh, communist witch hunt that went on. Uh, so uh, it's not unprecedented. But I think what's worrisome is, I mean, this really became such a distraction and such a detour and such a political um it's, just, elec- it's election interference. Yeah, it was. I mean, for the entire administration of Donald Trump, and it got a lot of things done despite that, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and what, what's really, what's, I guess, the most troubling thing to me, the most troubling thing is, are there not a few honest Democrats? I have not heard one Democrat come out and say, you know, this is not a partisan issue. This is an American issue. American intelligence agencies are supposed to be the most pure, the above the law, protecting, not above the law, but but the protectors of the law and protecting the American people in the American way, not being a part of this kind of, of, this is just depraved behavior for an intelligence agency. No, as long as it, I mean, as long as it helps them win, they will never say that. And I think that's a very, I mean, you draw a really interesting distinction, Randy, because I think... When we're looking at, you know, uh, the last election and we talk about stolen elections and stuff, there's Mm. a lot of Republicans out there who are still saying the election was stolen. But there are a lot of Republicans who say, look, we had plenty of problems. They changed the laws on us. There were lots of issues. But at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to get, you know, to call it a stolen election. And there are there are Republicans out there who will admit that, who don't want to admit it, but will and say, I've looked at all the evidence. You know, we've looked at the court cases we we have problems. We need to fix them and make sure they're fixed in the future. But I, you know, we're not going to legit. We're going to we're not going to say it was a stolen election. And but Dem- on this issue, Democrats stand in line and they will never say that what happened there was. You're wrong. right. I mean, accountability I think, would be nice. Well, you're you're right. I mean, you're speaking to integrity. And I, the sad thing is, I would say if you were to zoom out and look at political party behavior, representatives of political party behavior over the last three decades. Overall, I think the Republicans and the conservatives have been more willing on principle to compromise, to yield a little bit. To I mean, it started with uh, uh, H.W. Bush, right? George H.W. Bush, when he said way back in 1988, when I think it was uh, when he said that or 89, when he said, read my lips, no new taxes. But he made a tax deal that was supposed to be in return for cuts. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Reagan before him. An amnesty deal that was supposed to tighten border security. Time after time after time, the Democrats don't keep their words. Harry Reid in the well of the Senate. Donald Trump lied on his taxes later on when he was asked. Well, it worked, didn't it? I mean, I, how can you be a Democrat? 573-874-9390. How can have, you be a Democrat? I don't have that problem. You know, this kind of the, the whole discussion here... <laughs> For me, kind of cycles back to the whole debate about the FISA courts, yeah, and the you know the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and all of that, and how that was providing you know they said the Obama administration with at least half of their daily intel that they got on foreigners and and domestic issues and all that, but it, it just sort of seems like it kind of cycles back to that whole debate. You're well, right. And that debate's happening right now. I mean, yesterday there was a delay in the FISA reauthorization right. and there is yep. a significant Correct. debate going on in D.C. right now about surveillance. And I think, you know, all of the things that we highlighted this morning, especially about what we now know about the Obama administration, I think is going to make that debate heat up. And, and you know, you, you go back and ask the same questions over and over again. When the Patriot Act came about, did anyone, would anyone really argue that if you had people of integrity in charge of, of running these programs and, you know, doing domestic surveillance, what, what FBI, I guess, is responsible, you know, if you, if you could believe in the people 
that had such authority yielding it in proper ways, would any of us have a problem with that? I, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's, for me, it's a baby in a bathwater thing. Just because there's been some subterfuge, does that mean that we tank something? And look, let's be honest about it. I, I, there, there is some pretty solid evidence that there were some pretty evil things going on on January 6th. The Proud Boys, some of these people that were convicted that had weapons, they were violent. They were, it was different than gray-haired grandma walking in, you know, the, looking around the rotunda, you know? Well, and I think, I mean, I, I think with the increased threats that we've seen over the last 18 months, especially with the people flooding over the border, that there might even be an increased reason right now right. for additional surveillance because we don't know, we don't know who these people are. We don't know where they, where they came from, you know, and we've got, and, and they're just on the loose. And, yeah. and what we do know about some of them is some of them are very dangerous. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, I think we have to take that into consideration that we've just op- that we have this open border and that creates an additional serious threat to our to us and to our nation and so whether foreign or i mean think about the oklahoma city bombing that yeah. that wasn't exactly a guy from iran you know i mean there are internal threats there are crazies on each side of the ledger i just wish that we could trust that the people that are staffing these institutions whether it's the irs the cia the fbi maybe we just is there some way to do a moral check on them or some kind of an integrity check? I don't know. Well, we we sure got the fact check. You know, initially, the, we remember in the immediate days right after 9-11 and uh, Attorney General John Ashcroft and, and company, you know, pushed through the Patriot Act on all that. And then in, in recent years, I mean, going 20 years down the road, there are allegations that it did infringe on Americans' yeah. rights. Yeah, you're right. And you're continues right. to. I don't know. It's it's always that balance between security and liberty, and it continues to be a dis-
statewide. State You're going wide. to be there. I will be will there. Will you be reporting on Monday? And I will be. I um, So Friday night, I know there is a big dinner, and we I think um, both of our senators will be cool. speaking. And then um, Saturday night, uh, we'll feature Governor Parson and Governor Christy Nome. Wow. Very, and very I, good. And I got an email yesterday. Tickets are almost sold out. So if you're wanting to go to that, there's also a gubernatorial candidate forum on Saturday, That'll which I'm be looking fun. forward to. Yeah. There's so many hot and tightly contested races. I mean, there's a lot of undecideds at this time in the polling, you know, statewide. So it's going to be really interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you've got other, I mean, you've got your state committee meeting. And so a lot of the local uh, leaders will be there. And it's just a time where um, you kind of see who has what support. And most of the candidates will be there yeah. kind of greeting the crowd and greeting other folks. And then we have uh, on uh, on Monday evening, uh, Cole County's Lincoln Days. And uh, that's down at the Capitol uh, Plaza. Now, uh, and John, where do people get tickets for that? Do you know about that? I think you can go online and uh, contact Cole County okay. Republicans and all that, or uh, I, I know if you put you in touch with the uh, Ron Fitzwater, Jefferson City's mayor, I know he could point you in the right direction. And then I think uh, Congressman Blaine Lutkemeyer is a featured speaker. Oh, wow, night. great! And Scott Fawn will be speaking as well. That's right. Yes. And then uh, Boone County Lincoln Days, uh, uh, Thursday, February 29th. Now that's going to be at a new venue. New I'm venue excited for at this Midway Same. Golf and Games Tavern Room. I haven't been there, so I'm I'm anxious to be there. I'll be emceeing that event. Starts at 5.30. You have to purchase tickets by the 22nd, which is a week from now, right? A yeah, week from now. A week from today. To guarantee a spot. So uh, you can learn about that on 93.9 The Eagles' Facebook page for that link to purchase tickets. And right? this event has sold out the last couple yeah, of years. It has so um, I would highly encourage, if you're interested in attending, I know Attorney General Andrew Bailey is going to be the featured speaker. Yeah. Um, of course, Randy Tobler is going to be emceeing, and that alone is worth purchasing a ticket. To How see. will anyone You'll be there, and I'll be there? Great, yeah, it'll yeah. be fun. How will anyone else have time to speak if I'm emceeing? Well, I mean, I know Sheree Tolson <laughs> Rice is going to be there. I'm, there's going to be lots of folks uh, pr- running for office that are going to be giving little speeches. So, if you're curious on who to maybe vote for, yeah, yeah, uh, it's a great opportunity to you know meet all the candidates. And, and usually they're hanging out before, well, they mo- almost always are hanging out beforehand. You can actually, you know, press the flesh and actually get a personal interaction, learn a lot about folks. And it's it's sort of the difference between a job fair and an online application. <laughs> That's I mean, for sure. It really is. And it's it's a great thing. And they are well attended by both the politicians and you. So make sure that you come on in to do that. And I promise I'll be a man of very few words because there's going to be a lot of politicians that want to get their stuff speech in. Mary you know Elizabeth Coleman is going to be there. Uh, I just saw on Facebook. Yeah. So. I'm looking forward to meeting her in person. You know, I haven't emceed one of these events before, but um, the thing I'm worried about is how are we going to referee the time? Because that's always a problem. <laughs> but in the past, uh, Tony Lupo had like the soccer referee, the cards, <laughs> you know, I thought that was brilliant. I think like buzzer. I a think buzzer. we need like a foghorn <laughs> or a buzzer. Uh, yeah. My vote has, you know, I don't know why this hasn't been approved yet. Uh, for any Lincoln Day banquet that I've been to, yeah. I've always suggested like a, a shock collar or, <laughs> you know, like an electric podium, maybe like, like you, when their time's up, they get a shock. And if they keep going, they get another one. You're training but your dog. You mean like for whatever you know. reason <laughs> that hasn't been approved. There, there are I, I want to say um, there are other counties where I believe you have to pay basically oh. to get on the stage. Um, and they control the list of people. I kind of like in Boone County that they just let everybody yeah. talk um, because I really do want to hear from everybody. But for those of us who have to wake up very early, <laughs> you can kind of see us melting no. about at like eight and we're just like, how much longer is this going to go? It's but my it's, bedtime. It is nice. To, it, it really is nice to hear from everybody. <laughs> and is. we do. I mean, even down as far as the um, state house races, we have it's some great. competitive seats. So. And, and also to be in a room of like-minded people, you just, you just feel...
something that I hope we all recognize is highly problematic for all of us. I can- that was Mayor Quentin Lucas of Kansas City. Welcome back in to Wake Up Mid-Missouri, along with Stephanie Bell, producer Hannah, and John Marsh. I'm Randy Tobler. We're covering what happened in Kansas City yesterday on what should have been an absolutely, totally beautiful, jubilant day, and it was marred by the post-rally shooting. 21, 22, we're getting different reports of people shot, and um, 9 to 11 children injured, none of them apparently uh, with life-threatening uh, problems at this time. Well, and we're kind of in a tough spot here because and lots of folks on social media are finding themselves in the same boat there were all these really fun things that happened prior to the shooting at the parade that were posted on social media Mm -hmm. in real time and now that the shooting happened it's kind of like you watched the videos of what happened before and they just have this dark tone now yeah and it makes you really very circumspect when you're contemplating going to any public event uh, a concert a parade a, you know you have to if you're going to go see a concert you have to go to a big public high density event you know i thought about it yesterday because i think it's in the last week you asked me do you ever have any concerns yeah. about you know where you're at and i said yeah i i do um when i'm going to large events and uh i'm you know concerts i mentioned concerts i've been to where i've been hyper aware and i think um i think i will be hyper aware uh here in the near future now when we go to the fox theater on occasion to to catch a broadway uh, uh, show uh they do do screening you know hands up and you know the wand goes up and down so but now i mean there you know there are non-metallic weapons 3d printed weapons there's way to get around this kind of stuff if someone wants to hurt you they're going to hurt you which brings up the whole gun debate we've got people right off the bat trying to make gratuitous hay out of this event which is just unbelievable and and you know what to his credit i asked david tyson smith about that yesterday i said it's probably too early but do you have any thoughts as a legislator about this uh, no really but he's going to join us at 7 35 good cindy o'laughlin senator cindy o'laughlin will be us with us at 8 10 uh Senator Bill Eigel is joining us as we speak here he's uh, calling in this morning and so we'll get reaction to uh, to that from Senator Eigel. And we want to talk about the other things going on in the uh, in the General Assembly, too. And uh, speaking of Senator Eigel, here he is now. Senator Bill Eigel joins us now. How you doing, Senator? Hey, good morning, Randy. Happy, ha- thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, uh, we were going to talk about uh, the IP reform bill that's wending its way through and other, you know, high-priority issues for conservatives and the GOP. But let's talk about yesterday's events. Were you in, were you over there or not? No, I, I wasn't. I was. Uh, I'm in St. Louis right now. I did not attend the parade, but mm-hmm. I, I think, like most every other Missourian, uh, I'm devastated to see something like that happen uh, and really overshadow what was otherwise uh, a celebratory day. Um, it, those uh, these scumbags that decided to, to use the opportunity of everybody coming together for such an awful, heinous criminal act. Uh, certainly need to be brought to justice, and I'm looking forward to that happening in the very near future. In the meantime, my my heart goes out to anyone, uh, to all the victims of this, and uh, we're praying for all of them. Can I ask your opinion something, Bill? On uh, There are clearly going to be hues and cries for more gun legislation, for you know, some, some kind of cracking down on Second Amendment rights. That's a, that's a constant battle back and forth between the two, the two sides and two worldviews. On the other hand, one thing that I think we can say, <clears throat> and we don't know yet about the shooters, uh, there appears to be more than one, their motives, uh, their backgrounds, but it seems as though the vast majority, with almost without exception, when there's a violent crime, a murder, a rape, it's not the first time that party has been involved with the criminal justice system. And I'm not talking about stealing a, a pack of Wrigley's from the checkout aisle. Um do you feel as though there's something that can be done about repeat offenders that maybe could crank down on a little bit about this or something else from a cultural uh, uh, public safety justice system standpoint that that can reduce the likelihood of people acting out, whether it's gang violence, whether it's just crazy people? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I think certainly that can be done. Uh, and you, br- you bring up a good point. You know, the, we have uh, a lot of our urban areas are kind of soft on crime. Uh, they have seen exploding crime rates uh, for the past generation in this state. And really, uh, you, you have to wonder, you know, what has the state done, if anything, uh, to address the crime rates or hold these cities accountable? So 
uh, it's it's very frustrating to see them continue to get out of control. You mentioned a very simple solution, but you know, in the case of uh, the shooting yesterday. Uh, there were more than 600 police officers on hand to try to control that, and we have to understand that there there are there are certain bad actors that are so bent on 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 pursuing heinous, disgusting acts like this that uh, we may not be able to respond. You know, inside the Union Station, right there, all it took was one good guy with a gun, and he could have put a stop to this pretty much right away and prevented this tragedy from in the first place. So mm. I've never. That is precisely why. I have never been a fan of going after law-abiding citizens uh, mm-hmm. and their Second Amendment rights and curtailing those rights as a, as a possible solution. And you're exactly right, Randy. We know that the Democrats and everybody on the left are going to immediately politicize a tragedy like this uh, to try to go after law-abiding citizens. That's the wrong approach, and that's why the message of the Democratic Party is not being embraced virtually anywhere in the state of Missouri right now. Uh, Senator, we appreciate you joining us. I do want to point out, in fairness to Representative David Tyson Smith, who is live with us, uh, KWS.com and 939theeagle.com, he definitely did not say anything, at least on this show, and I've heard a couple other interviews, he did not certainly make any political remarks, but I, I know you're referring to apparently some others. But he definitely praised the police that ran in there and, and made that point, point over and over. However, there is another Democrat from here in Columbia who is running for a Senate seat. His name is Stephen Weber. He's a former state representative, and it, it seems to me on his Twitter page he is calling for stronger gun laws. I'm just going to read to you, Senator, what he wrote yesterday after the shooting. Get your response. He says, quote, if you're a Dem- I encourage people to look at his, his uh, Twitter. You can read this for yourself. Quote, if you're a Democrat, Mo Ledge candidate, you do call time tomorrow, which I mean today. No session, comma, so no excuses. You use this anger to push through and make calls you don't want to make. You raise money and use it to go out and win elections. The people of Missouri need you, and there is no other choice. End of quote. It seems to me, from, from what he's saying there, and that's a direct quote from, from his tweet, Senator, that Weber is, former Representative Weber, is calling for more gun control. Your response to that? Well, and, and actually, not just uh, candidate Weber uh, has called for that, but uh, Senator Lauren Arthur uh, from the Kansas City area also went on her Twitter page and called and decried the fact that we haven't had more progress, as she sees it, on gun control laws. So uh, it's not just candidates calling for this. It's, it's elected officials in the Democratic okay. Party calling for it immediately. My response to that is, is very clear. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We're not going to start going after law-abiding citizens uh, as a way to solve uh, and, and try to prevent uh, the actions of other citizens who are breaking the law. That's just not going to work. It is shown to never work, and it's not going to be. It's not. It's been rejected outright as a policy here in the state of Missouri, and we're going to continue to be uh, individuals who defend the rights of our citizens, including the Second Amendment. So if we're really serious about this, we should be looking at ways to empower our police, support our police, and make sure that individuals have the ability to protect themselves and those around them uh, by exercising their Second Amendment rights, not by curtailing them. So that's a dead end as far as uh, any, any, whether it's a Democrat or anybody else uh, that, that thinks we're going to curtail rights as a way to solve issues. That is not the case, and we're not going to stand for that. Senator Bill Eigel joins us on Wake Up Mid-Missouri, Wake Up Mid-Missouri this morning. Senator, we uh, just heard the other day from Bill DeWitt from the Cardinals and that coalition from all the major sports teams in the state that they now want to go the initiative petition process to put a, put a question about uh, legal sports betting on the ballot. You guys bumped heads in the Senate over it in, in, uh, in past sessions and all. Where are we at with that, and what do you think of their idea? You know, I, I, get, uh, I get asked about sports betting uh, a bit, but I, I got to tell you, and, and I've said this before, uh, if I had to list out the 100 most pressing issues facing the state of Missouri right now, Uh, and write them out all in a list, one to 100. I'm not sure sports betting is on the list. Uh, If there's a deal to be had on sports betting that that brings together a consensus of folks down in Jefferson City or otherwise, uh, great. I I don't don't envision necessarily that I'm going to stand in the way with that, even though I'm not sure I can vote for that, because if you look at the GOP platform, it's pretty clear that we're not going to be going out of our way uh, to expand gambling. But we've got so many other issues uh, that are critical to the well-being of this state uh, that don't involve just enriching the the owners of these sports teams to the tunes of millions of additional dollars. That I, I honestly don't know if there's going to be an opportunity for us to address this in this session or any future session uh, when 
sports gambling and expanding betting in this state uh, is is just not near the top of the list. It's just not near the top of the list. Uh, and and for folks that are are focused on that, and again, I know the sports teams are focused on that because they're going to make millions from it. That's that's why they're interested in it. They don't see this as a liberty issue. They're interested in it because they're going to make money from it. So they're going to do what they're going to do. Uh, if it comes up and there's a consensus, great. Otherwise, uh, we're going to focus on the issues that are actually important uh, to the state of Missouri. So let's talk about that list. You had told us before that your number one issue is initiative petition reform. Um, and that bill did come to the floor Monday. It was filibustered by Democrats, came back to the floor Tuesday, was filibustered again. Is there some work going on behind the scenes to try to break through that filibuster? Is this going to go to a PQ? Um, are we going to see it come up on Monday? What's next for that bill? So uh, I do expect it to come back up on Monday. In fact, I don't know that there is any appetite in the chamber to do anything but initiative petition reform until it's done. So uh, the fact that it's come up two days in a row is an indication of, the, uh, of how serious the majority caucus is about getting this passed. I think there is an expectation on all sides it's going to come up on Monday. And when it does, I think there's a heavy expectation that we're going to get it done. If it comes up on Monday, goes through the night, and still has not reached a conclusion, then I think naturally – at that point, the conversation does start to turn to whether or not uh, a, pre- a previous question motion is appropriate. Uh, I can tell you I've had uh, direct conversations with some of the members of the minority on this. I think they understand how serious the majority is. Uh, I would have I would have much preferred to have been in Jefferson City right now uh, to get this done. Uh, you know, the bill has moved. It kind of the bill has moved. It, went, it was kind of at a stop for the first three weeks. And nothing was happening. And then all of a sudden it it went warp speed all the way to the floor after some of the uh, tactics that the Freedom Caucus used to really apply the right amount of leverage. And then it's kind of come to a stop again. You know, we had last week we couldn't move anywhere because Senator Lincoln Huff was upset and didn't want to go to the initiative petition bill. And this week uh, we were we were in the process of letting the minority know that we were serious about it. But I think next week is going to be the one where we're going to be able to deliver that victory and get it out of the Senate. All right. And uh, in the last Half a minute we have. Um, your thoughts on where any kind of property tax reform can go this session? So this is another issue folks are watching closely. We have a personal property tax bill that's actually also on the informal Senate calendar. It's already made it through the committee process. Uh, I'm hoping in the, in the coming weeks we're going to see that on the Senate floor. Now, that bill is not a total.
the tweeters yes. and the social media and the TikTok and yes. the computers working overtime. <laughs> yes, and um, I hope I can have like a point of privilege here. You uh, Because we've tried to not talk about the Super Bowl and she who shall not be named with the initials of TS. Um, but I have a Super Bowl story that doesn't involve her. Um, but it does involve the Kelsey family. And specifically Jason Kelsey and his lovely wife, Kylie Kelsey. She kind of made a couple headlines after her appearance at the Super Bowl. She did. Did anyone see why? I didn't. She wasn't wearing Chiefs gear. Ooh. And, you know, Jason, of course, was decked out in the red and gold plaid, Mm -hmm. you know, overalls. He had the big Yeti shirt on. (laughs) Um, and he was quoted as saying he did wear the overalls on purpose to try to encourage himself to leave all items of clothing on his body <laughs> this time. Uh, so that was a strategic choice, which worked out well for him. Kylie Kelsey, however, was wearing the color red, but it was not adorned with any, you know, arrowheads or Chiefs logos, nothing of the sort. And I guess it it, was like Cincinnati or something, right? Yeah. So I guess it's been kind of a running thing in the Kelsey family that Kylie Kelsey is a Philadelphia Eagles fan through and through. (laughs) I think she's even joked before that if for some reason Jason were to transfer teams, like she would wear Philadelphia Eagles stuff (laughs) to his games. Uh, She refuses to wear any other NFL team. She'll wear like collegiate teams and other pro sports teams. But for NFL, she's only going to wear the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, it, that's that's principled behavior. I love it. Yeah. She's a Philly girl through and through. Good for her. And well, she wore a University of Cincinnati shirt at the Super Bowl with the with the brothers' ties to Cincinnati. Right, and it was kind of red and gold, so you know, yeah. in the family. Colors uh, were right. Yeah, but I just, you know, we talk a lot about principle on this show, and I thought that that was funny, but yeah. they've been kind of giving her a hard time of like, you know, Jason was saying he was telling her it's okay to wear Chiefs stuff because, you know, hey, your brother-in-law is playing. And you know that Philadelphia is not in the Super Bowl this year, right? Doesn't matter. She still she still won't wear Chiefs stuff. Uh, Travis says that he fully understands and he appreciated her being there to support. Uh, and I think that in itself was a big step for her just attending a game <laughs> that, the, <laughs> that the Eagles weren't playing in. Uh, So he was giving her some love for coming to the game (laughs) and understands the principle. The colors were close, right? So maybe it's like I do is you've been.
David Tyson Smith, representative, of course, uh, here was was intimately involved in that. Sadly, uh, with his daughter, we're so thankful that they're they're doing well now. Uh, he talked with us on his way home last night, and uh, now after a little chance to get a little shut eye, probably very little, uh, David, <laughs> with all that uh, adrenaline still flowing. What's what's on your mind this morning? How are you packaging and processing this after having been there on scene yesterday afternoon? Um, well, you know, I, as I learned more about it, you know, at the time you don't really know exactly what happened and who was injured and just hearing about the children that were hurt. I, um, I mean, my heart goes out to the, the parents and the families that were, that, you know, didn't, weren't lucky enough to at least get away and out and to think that, gosh, there's someone out there with a child that was shot. I mean, that, that's, that's horrific. Or to have witnessed that, that must have been sickening. It's uh, it's tough. Now, I, I don't think anyone's really been able to affirmatively report motives, uh, context, you know, past history of the shooters. Um, we've heard rumors about maybe gang violence. I, I, do you know anything more than what we're hearing through the general news feeds? I, I, I have no idea. I mean, that's part of the whole chaos of all of this. I mean, you know, like we were there, we were just running. And so, you know, People are telling me, hey, I heard there was kids. I heard it was this. You know, maybe I did hear something about it, it was gangs, but then that was just speculation. Yeah. I, mean, I, I have no idea what, what it was or, or what, who was involved or what, what happened. Aren't you Aren't you just – but talk about a, an American slash, uh, you know, I think it was from Kansas, hero, Mr. Contreras, who, uh, who along with another, you know, a, a parade goer, tackled at least one of the shooters. And then, of course, the police officers were on top of it, like white on rice. I mean, it was great. Yeah, and uh, that's fantastic. I don't know anything about that. Like I said, I haven't watched a lot of the news. Like, so we got home, um, and then, or, and that was pretty much it. I mean, I watched a little bit here and there. Uh, but I did see something about somebody got involved. So I think that's great if a citizen helped out and, and, and you know, did their part to, to – bring this person to justice and at least stop them representative we appreciate it i want to thank you publicly for coming yes. on with randy and me yesterday i uh, want to second that yeah thank i you. mean you you did a you did a fabulous job under very difficult circumstances and we appreciate it um it, joining us live because it was you had some very powerful and i appreciate you joining us again this morning but thank you for doing that uh terrible tragedy there is no doubt 22 people shot one person killed and I do expect we'll probably get another briefing from the Kansas City Police Department sometime this morning. I don't think a time has been set, probably late, later this morning. I just don't know when or early afternoon. But is there, just from your perspective, after you've had a chance to think about it uh, from from yesterday when you were on, any other just observations or just thoughts you want to share with our listeners about um, you were right there with people running out, screaming, police running inside, Representative. Anything you want to share? Any other thoughts from from yesterday's uh, tragedy? You know, one thing that I thought about um, that was starting to bother me after the fact, I mean, it bothered me at the time, but it really started to uh, kind of weigh on me is when, so we were running out, we were, we were in Union Station, we were running out, sprinting out. And around the corner, I was with my daughter, I was holding her hand. We ran up the street around the corner, and I remember we finally stopped. We had run quite a ways, and my daughter said, Dad, we haven't we haven't run far enough. Mm. And I'm like, mm. well, she said, Dad, we haven't run far enough. Mm. And that just, but the fact that your daughter is telling you you haven't run far enough, and I mean, so here we are just having a good time, they're in a festive mood. Who would have thought within 30 minutes your daughter would be telling you you guys hadn't run far enough, basically, from the shooter? And that's when... You know, we can see someone being loaded up on a stretcher. So it's just a shame that, you know, our society's, you know, decayed to this point that, you know, you can't even go out and have a good time. And, and everyone was festive. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't like you saw a lot of, like, thugs roaming around. It looked like everyone was happy, having a good time and good spirits. And for in such a short period to go from happiness, everyone's glad to be there, excited to see the players, to this is just, is just terrible. When's the last time you ran that fast? <laughs> I did. I I mean that you know, only partially funny. in jest because I mean no, I, I just yeah. to put us in the moment when 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 the fight or flight response you mentioned it last night when that's on you probably amaze yourself it's like wow 
if I if I was just going out for a jog, I, I would have probably been breathless and you know half speed. I'm just curious in the moment. What that's, afterwards? That's, 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 yeah, that's an excellent question. That's funny because I actually <laughs> thought about that. You know, I go to the gym and I get on the treadmill, but re- lately I've just been doing walking as opposed to running. I used to do more jog and running, but it's more, <laughs> been, more of a walk. And so it's funny you said that because well, I felt it. So yeah, like yeah. we were done, and then we got on the shuttle. I'm <laughs> sitting, and I could feel my heart. Like yeah, I I did a workout. I got some cardio in. So yeah, it's funny you said that. That was my thought. Is like, well, how far am I going to be able to run? I think she was wanting to run a lot further. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Representative David Tyson Smith, who joins us this morning after his in person and way up too close and personal experience yesterday at the Kansas City Post rally shooting. Representative, quick story back in the days immediately after the Columbine shootings, we had a, one of our managers at the radio station who grew up there was a graduate of Columbine and his take on it. When we put him on the air the next morning, he says, man, what do you tell your kids after you've told them all along? Oh, don't worry about that. That won't happen here. Boy, I'm sure you can relate. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, just, you know, and I hope my daughter's going to be all right. I mean, she just seemed like she was bothered by it. And you know, obviously we talked about it. And uh, so yeah, that, that, that's a concern is that, you know, hope this isn't, doesn't have a long lasting impact with her um, and that she can, you know, turn the page. And like I said, fortunately we were spared from, I mean, obviously we didn't get shot and we didn't see anyone get shot. Now we saw someone getting loaded up on a stretcher, which I'm sure it would be traumatic enough, but you know, I, I, you know, there's a lot of people who had a lot worse and you know, that's, there's people out there who have got loved ones in the hospital. And so that, that's, my heart goes out to them who really got the brunt of this. Is this going to change um, your demeanor, your awareness, your, I mean, I, I imagine as an elected official, you probably already have a different uh, sense of uh, security when you are in a public place, but does this, uh, does this change it at all? You know, it, you know, it's been a weird couple of weeks for us anyway, because, you know, just recently on the house floor, when you had the Israeli uh, council speaking and there's some Palestinian pro Palestinian people, in the back protesting and they had like they had raised scarves so you couldn't see their hands and what was happening there and that was so we were thinking that we actually got a security briefing about that if gunfire erupted just a couple weeks ago so the last two or three weeks has just been kind of a bizarre week for us um so i don't know i I don't know what the long-term ramifications are but lately you know there's been too much talk about guns and what to do or, or running from them at this point so who knows going forward but I mean, you try to be aware of your surroundings and try to take precautions, but really, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and if I may, uh, I know that you're you probably on a different side of the of the fence uh, than most of the listeners, and uh, you know, as far as maybe a little more pro gun control than a lot of folks listening. But from a cultural perspective, and being a father of of young children, and being a man of faith, are you concerned about cultural erosion and and boundaries in society at large in terms of true right and wrong, yes and no, this is the kind of behavior that's acceptable if you disagree with someone or something or some official or some policy. Do we have a cultural problem or do we have a a weapons problem? I mean, that's a broad question. I mean, I I don't know what the answer is. I think ultimately, I think all of us should put our pride down and our you know, loyalty if we feel like to this party or that party and just trying to solve problems. I think so often everyone kind of gets in their tribal camps, whatever tribe they're in, and they just stick to everything, to what their tribe believes in, and we just can't make progress. I think if people would put down their egos, come together, work together, I think we can solve problems. I think there's all kinds of issues. I think there's some gun problems, but there's also cultural problems. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's not either or. I think yeah. there's it's, it's, it's an amalgam of issues. Yeah. And, you know, I believe that that may be sort of the, the the narrow lane that may eventually end up with some kind of at least a civil discussion uh, between the, the, quote, two sides, if you will. If, if uh, you know, if, if we can admit that probably this is not this is not a, a, a one factor solution this is a multi factor problem and uh, no. God knows it's a problem, and uh, you witnessed it firsthand yesterday. We're so thankful that uh, that you're okay, and we're doubly thankful that you, um, you you've talked about it both last evening and and this morning, 
And again, um, uh, best wishes for you and your daughter as you try to emotionally recover from this. I can't imagine what it's like to be in, in the middle of something that. Thank you, Representative David Tyson Smith. Bless you. Anytime. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Well, there he is. Um, wow. Interesting. Uh, we, I'm having, we're seeing texts here that uh, are talking, son and I narrowly avoided walking into the shooting at the parade.
from Seattle. Police had said somebody at the Air Force Museum at Wright Pat Air Force Base in Dayton had called to report an offer they got to donate the item, which a neighbor said he bought at an estate sale. Bomb Squad was called out and said it was a Douglas Air 2 Genie from the 1950s designed to carry a one and a half kiloton nuclear warhead. <laughs> the Hiroshima bomb was 15 kilotons. No warhead attached, no rocket fuel. Something that was designed as an anti-Russian bomber weapon. They said a live genie was donate, detonated only once in July of 1957. And from the Braver Than Me department, a group of five Air Force officers at the time stood uncovered in their light khaki uniforms under the blast site <laughs> to prove the weapon was safe for use over populated areas. Oh. And now the, the Russians know the rest of that story. Holy cow, that is something. My goodness, how in the world do you... <laughs> the things that people keep. <laughs> and the... I remember the former Cole County Sheriff one time when I was in his office showed me a World War II submachine gun that a lady had called into the sheriff's office in Cole County and said, hey, I got this old gun and my husband passed away. I want you to take it away. And it was a fully functional Russian World War II wow. submachine gun. Oh, man. The thing I would like to see in person, and there's only a diagram, it's on the Wall Street Journal's articles from yesterday, and like one of the top articles is what they used to kill a, um, a Iraqi leader last oh. week. And it's called the Jinsu or like Ninja Bomb. And yeah. it doesn't actually explode, but it, it looks like a missile, but it doesn't have any explosion. It just has six blades that come out and it just shreds you, apparently. Yeah. And like so a they. Flying uh, steak knife. Yeah. <laughs> and so they said the blades will kill the targeted person and that it will prevent, you know, a ca other casualties. Um, and I think that's just like so interesting and fascinating that, you know. <laughs> We have so much technology and ultimately, yeah, it's like a, yeah, like a, a big spear. Yeah. Shredding, uh, shredding knife thing. Um, but they have a diagram on it. And I thought, wow, uh, that's, you know, really fascinating. And uh, I think pretty new, newer technology. Um, although I don't know, there's been versions of it around, but they just used it as at last week. Well, you know, the deer hunters who are listening will recall there are these deployable broadheads that they start out fairly narrow. And then when they hit mm -hmm. the, the target, uh, they three pop open. Yeah, they pop open. I use those. I love them. A couple of them are just absolutely wicked. I mean, they just rip a you-know-what hole right through the side of that deer. And, um, a man, what now? I said a you-know-what hole. <laughs> that's, that's okay. FCC's okay with that, aren't they? I don't know. Should I call them and ask? Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like a big A truck. A big, <laughs> <laughs> big A broadhead. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't know. You wonder about that. And you know what I think about, too, is in these remote areas, areas, uh, who was the, who was the, was it Princess Di who was it that did the mine project, the old mine yeah. project? Princess well, Di and, Princess then, Di. and then later Prince Harry. Got That's really it. Into got it. into mm -hmm. uh, harvesting old mines that were threats to, you know, to natives living in various uh, remote areas there. Well, I learned from watching The Crown. I know we were discussing this. Was it last week? Uh, we were talking about the Netflix series, the crown that's, uh, it, it seems as though it all is real stuff. Uh, but the Royal family has said, no, it's not a documentary. Oh. Um, but it follows even queen Elizabeth. The first season is about when she was a kid and kind of how she came to be queen. And one of the tragedies that the show covers is there was a big mine explosion that took out, you know, almost a whole town. So yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's maybe what, you know, sparked that passion for probably so the younger I mean, members some of these things and i you hear about um underwater minefields from you know, world war ii and so forth submarine fields you know? yeah. so it's crazy mm -hmm. goings on in the missouri supreme court yeah two big decisions out yesterday uh we learned um it wasn't a regular hand down decision day but they had a special one yesterday and issued two really important cases one that needed to be issued here quickly um about the senate district maps if you recall we had um, not only when we did the congressional redistricting, we also did redistricting for state house mm -hmm. uh, seats and state Senate seats. Um, the left folks from the left had challenged that state Senate map. Now, the people who had the Citizens Commission had not agreed on a map, if you recall, right. and a judicial commission had drawn the map. That map was then challenged. And there were issues both in um, in and around Kansas City and over in Hazelwood. Um, those are the people that challenged uh, and it went up on appeal. And the court said, nope, the judicial commission's map is good.
but that matters because filing's coming up. Right. So as it stands, it will stay. The map that the judicial and that's a drew, done deal. That's a done. Is deal. there another? Could they go to the they U.S. Can, Supreme Court? No. Okay. No, I don't think. So no. it's all all done. It should be done. Okay. Uh, and then we also heard more about Planned Parenthood um, yesterday. The Missouri Supreme Court was ruling on let's see House Bill three uh, thirty fourteen. That is an appropriations bill. If you recall, um, there was provisions in there to prevent. Uh, Medicaid funding being used for abortion providers. Uh, Planned Parenthood sued. They claimed a single subject violation and also an equal protection violation. The circuit court ruled in Planned Parenthood's favor. And
able to do last evening ahead of his talk with a survivor, a kibbutz survivor, a father of three, who was for 30 hours locked in his safe space within his house in his kibbutz during the October 7th attack in Israel. It started out planned as a, as a, a short, you know, 12 minute interview, but it ended up being, you know, a two part interview. And we'll be uh, doing that up the road probably on Monday. Uh, but we're still working that out. But I didn't want to air it uh, yesterday morning. We didn't want to have him in yesterday morning ahead of his talk at the MU student uh, activities uh, center because of what's gone on. I mean, we talked with Jennifer Bukowski about what happened at the Capitol last week, and I just didn't want to give bad guys, protesters that get physical, didn't want to give them a heads up. Yeah, I recently spoke to Jennifer in person about that experience, and she's still reeling, and just the nasty things that were said, um, the violent things that were said were just horrific. Yeah, and we talked to uh, Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft, who was physically, you know, they tried to push him down, and, you know, he... He's not a guy that's easy to push down. Well, there's a woman who's not easy to push down, metaphorically, and her name is Senator Cindy O'Laughlin, and she is the uh, majority floor leader of the Missouri Senate. She's uh, with us now. Uh, Senator O'Laughlin, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, it was uh, quite a day yesterday after a jubilant celebration in Kansas City, the parade, the rally. And then the mayhem and the carnage, uh, including one dead, a DJ in Kansas City. You were there at uh, at the parade. Tell us about what happened, uh, your experience yesterday around it all. Well, so in general, when I'm invited to something that is going to be like the parade, I usually say no <laughs> because, <clears throat> excuse me, because usually, <clears throat> pardon me, usually I'm worn out by the by the end of the week, but... I knew my husband would love it. He is a big cheese fan. I'm a cheese fan, too. So, uh, you know, the day was great. We we met at, the, at Kauffman Stadium. We were bussed down the parade route. There were literally people, as far as you could see, everywhere you went. And they were all having a great time and celebrating the Super Bowl win. So when it ended... Um, he he was he was in the main part of the building. My husband was, and I went downstairs because that's where the buses were to pick us up. But the buses hadn't gotten there yet, and I'm just standing there with some people. And all of a sudden, some of the people kind of I hear a siren, and then people start running. Mm. And <laughs> me being me, I just look around thinking wonder what's happening here. You know, I I didn't hear any shots or anything like that, but it was just right around the corner from where we were. And um, so I, and then some police came out of the building, um, you know, with weapons drawn. And so then I just kind of stepped back against the building into a little alcove where there was a doorway and thought I would just wait and see. And then they went back into the building and um, you know, ultimately, we were all kind of ushered into a lower level parking area and we waited there. And then, you know, when they decided it was all clear, we were all kind of escorted up out of there and got on transit buses and were taken back to the stadium to pick up our cars. How, how did you feel about... Um the security around you, you said you were ushered into another area. Did you feel as though, you know, in as rapid as a manner as you'd expect that the police and, you know, security, you know, were getting things under control or was there an extended period of pandemonium? No, really. I mean, the people running, that that only went on for a couple of seconds, really, maybe 15, 20 seconds. And a lot of us, didn't take off running because we didn't see any da- any danger mm-hmm. and you know everywhere we went there there was a massive police presence everywhere mm-hmm. outside inside the building all along the parade route i mean my take on it is i'm not a security expert but my take on it is Kansas City was was well policed during the event, and I mean, I think if someone is bent on creating mayhem, 
in a crowd that may have numbered a million people, um, I'm not sure what you can do to stop that. We're already seeing some calls on um, Twitter from Democrats either blaming uh, Missouri Republicans or calling for change. Do you anticipate that discussion uh, hits the Senate floor next week, at least in a filibuster? Um, prob- probably. I mean, I, I have friends on both sides of the aisle, and I, I understand their feelings, but I don't make decisions by feelings. Um, I mean, if you if you have additional laws and you restrict law-abiding citizens, I don't see how that stops people who are not law-abiding citizens. And to me, that's that's the crux of the issue. Taking guns away <clears throat> from citizens who are law-abiding only leaves them more defenseless. That's always been my position. I understand they have a different p- position, and I'm not you know, um, minimizing how they feel about it, that I just don't see the rational thought behind that position. Senator, we appreciate you joining us live. Uh, I I really appreciate you putting in perspective, uh, obviously describing the number of police, and we've reported, quoting the mayor of Quentin Lucas, 600 Kansas City police officers were there at least. That does not include the other 250 law enforcement agents. And it does not include uh, what we now know, we believe to be maybe potentially snipers that had to go up on rooftops. Those were in addition to that, based on some television reports that I've seen. So appreciate that. In terms of the in just in terms of this this layout, because I, I've been to Union Station. It's been many years. I think a lot of our listeners probably haven't been there. Um, And I see the stage. I've got it up on our website, but you've got a lot of grass as well from the state and ballpark from the stage where you guys were fairly close to how far away roughly when they say west of Union Station. What are we talking about there in terms of, you know, give us some perspective on how far away that is, because Governor Parson made it clear he heard the gunshots. He was right there. So he had to be close. You know, my husband heard the gunshot because mm. we we were separated. He was still in the main part of the building. <clears throat> I'm not very good at distance, sure. but, you know, maybe half a block mm. wow. from the stage to the end of the building mm. where I was actually just in that building um, last week talking to the Chamber of Commerce. So, you know, I... I understood after I got all the details where this all happened. And really, it, it's kind of a wonder that I didn't walk out there because I thought about doing that for a minute. I thought, well, you know, the buses will probably come around here. Maybe I should walk over there. But, you know, I didn't. Thank heavens. Mm. So it wasn't, it, it's not very far from where the stage was to where this happened. But it happened after you know, everything, the activities had stopped and everybody started coming into the building and then going out various exits to, you know, wherever they were headed. So that there weren't, well, there probably were still a lot of people out there, but the uh, stage activity had ended and lots of people had started to depart. Now, earlier uh, on our show, we talked to Senator Bill Eigel, and we know initiative petition reform was on the floor Monday and filibustered and then back on for Tuesday. Um, you know, what 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 path forward do we have? Is Will there be any negotiating um, to try to get the filibuster to end, or do you see this hitting, you know, a PQ? Are, are you expecting, will that be the first thing that comes up on the floor next week? Um, you know, what I've told all the other senators and Um, And this is in addition to talking with the Democrat senators that we would go to it Monday and we would stay on it till we finished it. Mm -hmm. And I think that people forget that we passed it last year, basically pretty, pretty close to what we what I feel like we will pass this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after a couple of days of uh, negotiation and, you know, the things that you have to go through to pass something of that size uh we we passed it and um i believe i believe we pass it monday now there was significant disagreement though last year between the senate version and the house version has there been any conversations with the house about um coming to a consensus on the actual uh provisions of the initiative petition reform measure well 
yes. Um, what we passed last year had the concurrent majority part stripped out. Um, and, you know, that, that really is the heart of it. So we're, we're going to expect that that stay in and we'll work closely with the house to try to be sure that gets done. Um, Senator Cindy O'Loughlin joins us here on Wake Up Mid-Missouri. You know, in another uh, topic that we discussed with Senator Eigel, that was the property tax reform. You know, uh, it's pretty clear. He's made it crystal clear that he would like to see it just go away in one felled swoop. Um, on the other hand, he recognized uh, that uh, some incremental change may be possible in terms of at least a reduction in the taxes that people would pay at the end of the day. Your thoughts about that? Um. You know, I think he, he – certainly he has a point that many citizens feel. I mean, they are really pressured from all the inflationary things going on in our world today. And um, there are a lot of us who don't like to think of particularly senior citizens who can sometimes almost be priced out of their home because of their property tax. But I think you also have to consider – the realities of the expenses of the counties and how are those covered and what would, you know, how how do you move forward from that? We've all got a lot of good ideas, but it's the implementation that's really the difficult part. Yeah. And I think he is open to conversation about that. So I think maybe, you know, you could see something get through the Senate this year. Overall, uh, before we wrap here, I mean, there was a lot of contentious back and forth between members of the GOP conference in the Senate uh, in the first few weeks. Do you feel as though there's been uh, at least a little improvement in relations between uh, and relationships between the Freedom Caucus members and the not Freedom Caucus members? (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know, Bill's on one side of that and I'm on the other. (laughs) And as you know, (laughs) we've had some words. Yeah. But... (laughs) <laughs> As he and I both laughingly say right now, you know, it's good, Bill. <laughs> so when he comes into the Senate, you know, I look at him and say, is this good Bill Day? And, you know, he always laughs. So, well, at uh, least yeah, he I gives think- you a warning, right? <laughs> yes, and I give him one, too. <laughs> uh. so we, you know, right now, right now there's a little bit of a cessation of that. And, um uh, Everyone wants to get something done, and we don't serve the people of the state if we no. uh, let petty petty things or even big yeah. things, you know, keep us from getting that done. And I, I speak of myself as well as anybody else. <laughs>
temperatures this morning are just barely in the green. Yesterday, uh, we had the S&P close up nearly 1%, NASDAQ up 1.3, Dow up 0.4. Mm. Gainers include communication services, industrials, consumer discretionary, which if you recall had been significantly down the day before, and tech. Um, we had some, I'm going to do kind of a smattering of business news because we've got a lot going on. Um, but locally, I was driving by on the highway yesterday down in downtown Jefferson City and saw they were messing with that motor bank pylon sign, John, and they got a new one. Um, and the motor bank is like 1960s era. It looks really nice. They posted it on Facebook. So check Whoa, that out. Cool. Um, How about that? On the state level, we found out earlier this week, and I don't know that we talked about it much, where the new Royal Stadium might be going. Yes. It's in the crossroads area. And I know a lot of people had gotten nervous that they might move it out of like kind of the heart of downtown looks like it's going to stick around um they've got some cool maps online so you can check that out um but also i think the big news this week is jeff bezos saving a boatload of money by becoming a florida man um he was living if you recall up in seattle he's been trying to sell off his amazon shares but uh back in let's see 2002 or no 2022 washington the state enacted a 7% capital gains tax. And so he stopped selling off his Whoa. Amazon shares and said, you know what? I am going to hightail it down to Florida. They seem to be a little bit friendlier. Um, he has plans to offload about $50 million in Amazon shares over the next year. That's worth $8.7 billion. Um, that would save him $610 million yeah. in taxes. Okay, so I this wow. this brings it back to, okay, you're in Jefferson City. You're a legislator. You're a conservative legislator. You're a Republican conservative legislator. Why would you not look at Florida, Texas, Tennessee, and say, let's do that? Yes. Why not just move to what successful states are doing and say, look, these states are booming. They're successful. They're bringing business and business people in. Well, I keep asking this question. No one can answer it. Yeah, well, it we, takes time. We have, well, it doesn't take time. Pass a law. Well, and we heard uh, on the texter, I know, in response to Bill Igel's interview, and he said, you know, we got to do something about uh, personal property tax. And one of our texters says, that's a drop in a bucket. We need to actually look at our, our, our holistically look at our tax policy and do something different. And I, um, excuse me, I would tend to agree with the texter and look at some of these other states. Yeah. You know, my sister left for Tennessee and she loves having no income tax. And I got a lot yeah. of friends who have recently moved to Florida. Florida, so. You should not punish people for being productive. Certainly not. The harder you work, the more you make. Oh, you have to pay us more. Hello? It's crazy. And it's getting easier and easier for people to vote with their feet and their house and just pick up and move. Wow. Hey, when we come back... Uh-
Sasquatch. Uh, John, you, those are fighting words, aren't they? No? Nah, she's tougher than I am. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, now, Hannah, I have to commend you for f- pushing through despite having a little congestion. You have a oh, little cold, a little yeah. virus. Hannah doesn't <laughs> call in. Hannah's not like the rest in her generation who just like, ah, I got a little hangnail, I'm calling. No, Hannah is dedicated to you, Stephanie the dear was, listener. Stephanie was giving me grief earlier because she says I'm always sick. And I just I go, I go in spurts, okay? And then there's a long period yeah. in between. Yeah. But anytime the weather changes, I inevitably get a little bit of a cold. So I'm taking Claritin. <laughs> There you go. So we're we're getting there, but I sound worse than I feel. I think you need to. You drink all this energy stuff that has vitamins and whatever. I you take to, daily vitamins but too. You, but yeah, but you need to eat the symphony, the symphony of immune support I minerals know. and flavonoids and beautiful things that are in vegetables: green, yellow, orange, beautiful, multicolored. What did you have for breakfast, Randall? <laughs> Once in a while, I'm. <laughs> once in a while, I'm. We, Brian Houseworth and I were working overtime last night. We had a crazy this, night. Yeah. I, there's a certain Brian. Don't you think you deserve a little culinary reward now and you then? You know, in, in culinary those, those, those donuts that were presented. Now, these by, were donuts. Oh, oh, these were donuts from Elena's. They, really they are the best donuts. They were ever. really good. They were really good. But you know, Mrs. You, Tobler is probably listening, going, "Wait, that's not what I packed him." For I actually <laughs> already confessed because I knew that you'd, you know, call me out on that. <laughs> were, I had they, one too. They were absolutely delicious. But your point to Hannah is well taken. Vegetables are important, yeah. But moderation, everything else. Not in but vegetables. You can't including eat too moderation. Many, you, can't, right? you can't. You can't. You can't eat can't too many eat vegetables. Too many vegetables. No, now, Randy. They, Randy joins us from. Uh, I don't know. It says California. Randy, join uh, join us. You were at the event. The good mm, California. Yeah, yeah. Me and my eleven-year-old son went, and we had a we had a, a wonderful time. We had a great day, and it was very positive. All the, you know, I you know I commiserated with probably a thousand thousand Chiefs fans. I I don't know, but just complimenting their gear, complimenting them. You know, just it was very positive. Everyone just was very happy, and then you know the event was over, and we were walking back to where we were parked, and. Uh, we, we were walking, there were probably about 80 people around us, and all of a sudden, um, a lady came running yelling, active shooter. Mm. Um, and uh, we didn't know if it was real or not, but we we turned around and went in a different direction. And uh, we, we passed the word as we were walking, hey, this lady said active shooter, and I mean, she probably she potentially saved 80 lives, you know. And... Um, so, you know, luckily, you know, we didn't walk into it, but apparently it was close by. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, we just went in a different direction. We, we saw lots of lots of uh, police cars uh, racing with their uh, sirens on and lots of, you know, response vehicles and stuff. And so we figured out it was probably real and, um, you know, obviously feel terrible for, for everybody that was hurt, you know, and killed. And, oh, man. you know, they ruined, they, they ruined a, a, a wonderful, perfect day. You know, mm-hmm. they did. And um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a fan of, of Quentin Lucas, but man, he, I, I, I heard that he had said there were 800 police there. Yes. I, mean, what, what, I mean, that's a lot. You know what I mean? I don't know how, how many more you want to, to prevent, prevent this from happening. But, uh, but, no, we got lucky. We got very lucky that lady alerting us and alerting everybody else you know and allowed us to to get away you know and is this so uh, got... randy is this going to change your plans or attitude or even attendance at future large crowd events i don't think so i mean i just i don't know i mean i i don't, I don't think so i might not take my son you know but but for me i mean i don't I, i'll still go you know i'm on you know i there's crazies everywhere, man. You know, I can walk into my office today and someone could walk in with a gun. And Speaking of that, away. Brian Houseworth joins us now. No, I'm kidding you. <laughs> oh, there you oh, I'm kidding. Had a long night. Uh, no, it oh, was good. a long night. And yeah. Brian and, and Mike uh, Murphy sat in yesterday as I started the event. I had to record this wonderful interview. You won't believe the interview yes. that you're going to hear probably Monday with a survivor. I, he spent 30 hours in the safe space in his house at a kibbutz on the Gaza-Israeli border yeah. while the mayhem was going on. Unbelievable. And so then, uh, Brian, I know you were carrying on along with Mike. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Randy, <clears throat> in terms of the end caller, I appreciate you calling in. The Thanks, ma- Randy. Yeah, the mayor, uh, is, did you, is he there? Or did you, 
he's it's still there. The mayor had indicated that we had um, it, basically west of Union Station is where they said the shooting took place. But when David Tyson Smith was on, he thought he thought he heard gunfire. He may be correct because they've n- never really said if it was two different shootings or maybe two different locations. When you s- said the lady, tur- uh, you turned around because the lady was saying active shooter. Give us some idea. How far were you from the building itself, Union Station, from where the lady was running? Uh, I mean, we were maybe one block over. Wow. Uh, yeah, we were maybe one block over. We, we, it was. I mean, it wasn't that long after the, the event was over, and you know, we we were you just kind of taking our trek back to where we were parked, and yeah, I think we were one block over. We just I mean, us, and you know, we got, we got lucky. You know, got very lucky. Yeah. I appreciate well, thanks you for your uh, thanks for your eyewitness account there. Appreciate it. Glad you're safe, Randy. I think it, to to piggyback on what the caller said there, Quentin Lucas is getting a lot of attention. He was on. Um, well, the, when I say on, because the the cable networks, Fox, MSNBC, they all carried this live yesterday. The the first press conference, and he was there speaking. And Quentin Lucas, of course, spends a lot of time here in Columbia. But but I will tell you that he before it, and we ran it. Um, the story, it wasn't, it was 600 approximately Kansas City police officers, mm-hmm. another 250. We now know FBI agents. That's where the 800 plus number the, comes yeah, in. That gets oh, confusing. Okay. So at least 600, troopers. there were Jackson County, the troopers were involved, Jackson mm-hmm. County Sheriff's deputies. We the, know the FBI. There are some uh, t- some uh, listeners and viewers that were on TV that believe there were snipers on the roof. There probably were. They were. They were. You know, we've had that before. But with when when uh, Carnahan, Governor Carnahan's funeral, the uh, Secret Service had snipers on the roof. He also pointed out the mayor that they they gave the city employees the day off. I hope they're going to pay these city employees, by the way, because over a thousand of them were working. I think they will get paid. They were they were heroes. But technically, the city was off. But they were all working. There were city parks people that were there that were running, helping out. There were city trash collectors, sanitation workers that were there, water workers. There were people from the health department, um, people that just also the parks. I think I mentioned parks, just basically all the agencies, men and women. Technically, they had the day off. My interest, if you look at his tweet, that's what he said. They had the day off, but it was over a thousand that were working they did a great job, and is the mayor said you had let's say 850, probably a little bit more than that, that were there. That doesn't include the undercover cops. I could see some in undercover. You could tell on the video last night they were wearing one undercover cop was wearing a Travis Kelsey jersey. You could tell he was an undercover cop by what he was saying on on film. And the point is, you have that much in someone still able to do it because it's just it's it's just it's it's sad it's it really is uh, matt nichols of course the president of the columbia yeah. police officers association text and with permission says we can quote him mm-hmm. violent criminals were will commit violent acts regardless of the time place or surroundings if you recall we had a homicide that occurred in front of a number of columbia pol- police officers less than 75 feet away as they were watching the area that's correct i and don't what what that would have been for it, those who and, don't remember. And hopefully recall. Matt and if Matt's listening, I'm going to make sure I give I'm going from memory, Randy. This is going to hit close to home for you. But there was a there was a shooting, um, and Matt can correct me if I'm wrong, one that I can remember for sure. Three people were shot on homecoming weekend. What you, Oh, what, this is where my son in law was yes, involved? Yes, and I believe He was there, a first responder to I, that that gentleman was there. The young man I was believe, there with his mother. Yes, and I believe one of them did died yeah. i believe I'm, I'm there's been so many but i rem, i remember that you also have had um down there on was it cherry and something would have been that, down yeah there was a uh, church nearby on the it was corner, a church i'm trying to remember there's a there's a uh, but it was homecoming was, eve yes it was it was a friday night before yeah. homecoming i want to say it was 2022 i don't think it was this past year Matt, Matt can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm go, going from memory on that. But we have also had yeah. shootings in Columbia downtown um, where the vibes, I mean, yeah. remember vibes in, yeah. and there were, there were police, li- I mean, literally it was like a block away from the police department. They were already, I mean, I mean you know, Ronald Reagan was almost killed, right. <laughs> surrounded with, with,
even though there's going to be a little snow coming tomorrow, we hear one to three inches, right, Stephanie? Is that what you're hearing? ABC yep. News reporting, ABC 17? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we knew that winter wasn't over. Just about the time I was thinking about getting out and walking in the beautiful parks and enjoying it. <laughs> but let's talk about what happens when that clears with Parks and Recs folks. Yeah, Phil Stiles, Missy Moriarty in with us. I guess that is a good question. You guys get caught up in it just like everybody else does, don't you? We do, and um, our, our, our park maintenance guys are great. We uh, try to get the greenway trails, the fitness trails within the park system cleared off. We know that people like to, to get out and walk their dogs or get out and walk just for exercise. So that is always a priority whenever it snows. Missy, talk to us about uh, we got a brand new guy in charge. Uh, a lot of folks in Jefferson City know Aaron Griffith. He has now been moved up to Parks Director. He has, and we are so happy to have him. He's been with us for several years as the Assistant Director and was recently moved up to the Director's position, and so far he has not run from the building screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, we're, we're very happy to have him in that position. I'm looking at the website, jcparks.com. Beautiful picture of the Capitol and a walkway up to it and then some green space underneath. So is that where the maps and the events and all the information is all in one aggregated place, right? That's correct. And looking at city parks, trails, uh, are there mixed-use trails? I've always wondered about that. I mean, are there trails? Sometimes, I know in the Columbia area, um, you know, some of the trails would be okay, I guess, for mountain bikes, but I don't even know if they're allowed or not versus pedestrian trails. How do you, how do you d segregate that all out, or do you? Um, we do have uh, dedicated mountain bike trails out of Bender Park. There's about 15 miles of mountain bike trails at the park. Um, those are also um, used uh, as, as hiking trails, so those are multi-use. Uh, the Greenway Trail, obviously, is multi-use. People can bike or, or walk on those. And um, so we, we do have a variety of trail options for people in Jefferson City. Talk to us about uh, capital improvements, because I know uh, Director Griffrath, something he's brought up, and you talk about a pretty ambitious campaign, uh, four-plus million bucks, right, Phil? It is. Um, you know, and that and that's is, is going to be fluid. Um, those are some projects that, that staff has identified, our Parks Commission has identified. Uh, recently, we um, did major upgrades to community park mcclung park ellis porter park now we want to take a look at some of the other parks that uh haven't really had that much attention over the years um we're going to be focusing on uh pavilion at uh, memorial park the pavilion at ellis porter riverside park uh there are some improvements to um, infrastructure as well as some new equipment what about upcoming events? I know the spring and summer are always a big, uh, big event time for Parks and Rec. So what are you working on there? Anything new this year? One of our main events that we have every year, in fact, 61 years so far, is the annual ice show. We are coming up with the 62nd annual ice show at the ice mm -hmm. arena. The theme is Curtain Up, so it'll be all about musicals. That okay. is April 12th through the 14th. Um, evening shows on Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m., Wow. And then a matinee at 2 p.m. on Sunday. So tickets will go on sale um, beginning March 12th for that. So you can get um, tickets ahead of time or you can get them the day of the show. That ice arena really is something and provides so much, so many good things for um, for Mid-Missouri. I recently got to go to a Mizzou hockey game there and was really enthused and it was fun for all ages and it was just packed. But I know a lot of people who take advantage of those, um, of hockey uh, practices and ice skating lessons and stuff. It I really saw that on nice. your social. Yeah. yeah. Yes, now, absolutely. It, We've got uh, Mizzou hockey just wrapped up their home game season recently. Uh, they are doing very well. They're going to move up to D2 next year. Uh, we've also got youth hockey for six through high, six years old through high school. We've got figure skating for toddlers through adults. Um, we have speed skating for all ages, and we've just got open public sessions as well. Now, uh, Missy Moriarty there and Phil Stiles join us uh, on Wake Up in Missouri with Parks and Recreation from Jefferson City. Is it true that there? I mean, I I don't know whether I should get this out there. Is it true that ahead of this ice show? 
The opening event will be a, a demonstration by John Marsh dancing to some Earth, Wind, and Fire tune. Some ice oh dancing. Boy. Absolutely. Is yeah. Uh, we've got his outfit picked out. It's a lovely hot pink uh, tutu with sequins. Oh, sort of like yeah. a, a knockoff from Taylor Swift, one of those outfits. Oh, man. Well, he I looks just they, like her. What oh. they call mismatch pairs on the ice, I think. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad there's no tights. That's all I can say. Oh, boy. boy, howdy. Who, sa- who says? <laughs> That's great. And, of course, you can learn all about the things going on in Jefferson City with the Parks and Recreation Department. I'm just looking at under the events here, just one after another event, you know, and uh, way ahead this year, Stars Under the Stars, Kids Fest, Dog Day at the Diamonds, Earth Day celebration in April, Easter egg on March. Man, you guys must work 24-7. It feels like it sometimes. <laughs> Job right. security. Hey, well, thank you for being with us. Really appreciate you, and we look thank forward to keeping up with uh, the goings-on, and especially that John Marsh uh, event ahead of the ICE show. All well, right. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much, Missy and Phil. Appreciate it. All right, and they do such a great job on their great. socials too, they and I, their email lists and stuff. If you got young kids, I mean, you could do something almost every weekend there with yeah. what the parks has going on. Yeah, that's really really cool. It seems like we've come to the end of the show, and this was a blink, and it's done. It was. We are getting some news out. Um, March oh. twenty. No, the hush money trial jury oh. selection is going to start March twenty fifth. We just learned that this morning. So Th- this the is, judge is going forward with the trial. This is the Stormy Daniels hush money yep. up and with Trump. He's, and the Fonnie Willis stuff is going on right now. Like you say, I mean, Trump is just going to be in court every day. I don't know where the campaign goes. Pretty much. We'll keep you updated. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Gary Nolan. Bye.